Hey guys, welcome back to part 5 of the Android Architecture Components tutorial. So in the last video we created the repository, which is not part of the Architecture Components libraries, but it's considered best practice because it provides an abstraction layer on top of the different data sources. The next step is to create the view model, which again is part of the Android Architecture Components libraries, and its job is it to store and process data for the user interface and communicate with the model. It requests data from the repository, so the activity or fragment can draw it onto the screen, and it forwards user interactions from the UI back to the repository. And putting UI-related data into the view model instead of the UI controller is so useful because view models derive configuration changes. When we for example rotate an Android device, the activity on the screen gets destroyed and recreated, which also means that the state of all its member variables are lost. The view model on the other hand stays alive and keeps its data, and the new activity then just retrieves the same view model instance and can immediately access the same variables. It doesn't have to save or refetch anything. But why do activities get destroyed when we rotate the phone? This whole tear down and recreation process of activities happens because when you change the screen orientation of a device, it is considered a configuration change, because you basically provide a completely different screen. Landscape and portrait mode are quite different from each other and you might want to use different layouts for each of them. Android makes providing these different layouts very easy because you only have to put them into the correct resource folders and the system then automatically picks the appropriate one when the activity is recreated. This is why this whole recreation process happens in the first place. It is there to give you the chance to load alternative resources. Another example would be changing the language of the device. If you change the language in the phone settings and then go back to the activity, it also gets restarted, because you might want to provide different string resources now. This is also the reason why you can't avoid configuration changes simply by locking the screen orientation. It's just one of many different configuration changes and you can't disable all of them. If you want to learn how to provide alternative resource files for different configurations, I will put a video tutorial on that into the info card box in the top right corner of this video. Activities and fragments have callback methods where we can save and restore variables between configuration changes, but it's usually a very tedious and error-prone process, and it's also only suitable for small amounts of data. And if you run any asynchronous operations in your activities, you would have to make sure to stop and restart them in the correct lifecycle methods, otherwise you could hold objects in memory that you don't even need anymore, which would be a so-called memory leak. By putting the data into the view model it doesn't get lost and we don't have to interrupt anything when the configuration change happens. The view model is only removed from the memory when the lifecycle of the corresponding activity or fragment is actually over, which is the case when an activity is finished or a fragment is detached. Okay, so let's go back into Android Studio and create this view model. And just as a reminder, in the description box under each video, you can find a link to the corresponding code snippets. Okay, so again we right click on our package and create a new Java class. Let's call it node view model. And it has to extend not view model, but Android view model. We click OK. And then we click on this little light bulb and on create constructor matching super. Android view model is a subclass of view model. And the difference between these two is that in the Android view model we get past the application and the constructor, which we can use whenever the application context is needed. You should never store a context of an activity or a view that references an activity in the view model, because as we learned the view model is designed to outlive an activity after it is destroyed. And if we hold a reference to an already destroyed activity, we have a memory leak. But we have to pass a context to our repository, because we need it there to instantiate our database instance. And this is where we extend Android view model, because then we get past the application and can pass it down to the database. Okay, in this view model we create two member variables. The first one is our node repository, and we call it repository. And the second one is a variable for the live data again of list of nodes, and again we call it all nodes. And we instantiate our two member variables in the constructor, we assign the repository to a new node repository, and we pass the application, and then we assign all nodes to a repository dot get all nodes. And our activity later only has a reference to the view model, not to the repository. So this is why we create wrapper methods for our database operation methods from our repository. 
This looks like this. Public void, insert, where we pass a node, node. And in here we simply call repository, dot insert, and forward this node. And then we do the same for our other methods. Public void, update. Public void, delete. Then we need delete all nodes, but we don't have to pass a node. Repository delete all nodes. And lastly, a method that returns the live data of list of nodes. We can take the suggestion here, which creates this get all nodes method that simply returns our all nodes member variable. Okay, and that's already it for our view model. As you can see, it's a pretty simple class. And the next step is to get a reference to this view model in our activity. So let's do this as well. For this we switch over into our main activity class. And we don't have our recycler view yet, so we can't display our data, but we can already take care of retrieving our view model and then attaching the observer to the live data. For this we create a member variable for our view model, private node view model, node view model. And then on create we assign this variable. But we don't call new node view model because then we would just create a new instance with every new activity. Instead we have to ask the Android system for view model. Because the system knows when it has to create a new view model instance and when it has to provide an already existing instance. And getting this view model instance is pretty easy. We take our node view model equals and then we call view model providers with capital V dot off. And then we have to pass an activity or fragment. And this way the view model knows which lifecycle it has to be scoped to. So when we pass our main activity with this, the Android system will destroy this view model when this activity is finished. And outside of the parenthesis we call .get and pass the class name of our node view model. Because this is the view model we want to get an instance of. And that's the whole process. And now we can take our node view model, call our get all nodes getter method. And since this returns live data, we can call .observe, which is a live data method. And here we have to pass two arguments. The first one is the lifecycle owner, for which again we have to pass our activity or fragment with this, because as I already explained, live data is lifecycle aware, and it will only update our activity if it's in the foreground. When our activity is destroyed, it will also automatically clean up the reference to the activity, and this way we avoid memory leaks and crashes. And the second argument is an observer, which we can pass as an anonymous inner class with new observer, this one here, which gives us this unchanged callback method. And this will be triggered every time the data in our live data object changes. And as you can see, we get past our list of nodes. And this is where we would update our recycler view later. And again, this will only be called if our activity is in the foreground. And if we rotate the device and our activity is destroyed, this will not hold a reference to this activity anymore. This all happens automatically under the hood, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, we don't have our recycler view yet, so we can't update anything. But we can show a toast message in here. Because this method should be triggered as soon as we start observing, which is when we start our app and go through on create. So let's see if this works. Just gonna write unchanged. So let's run our app and see if this is triggered. And that is unchanged. Okay, in the next video we will then create our recycler view adapter. So make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss that. And if this video was helpful, please leave a like. Take care.